Lissa, why do you eat such complex meals? Aren't we supposed to be eating simply? Let's talk about that in this video. Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about diet minimalism and simplicity. But before we begin, as always, we've got 40% off any or all of our raw vegan recipe eBooks. There's over 700 different recipes across almost 20 eBooks now. You can check out the link on the screen or in the description box below and enjoy 40% off any of the eBooks with code RAWFOOD40. This also applies to our video courses. Nate has a video course on growing your own sprouts and microgreens, and I have a video course on checkmating your cravings. So you can also get those, use the same code, and you can get 40% off those courses as well. So I have been asked quite often in the last six months why I have increased my complexity of my meals and why I eat so many things in one meal when I should be eating more simply. So let's talk a little bit about simplicity and minimalism. So I personally, and these are just my thoughts, take it or leave it, it's totally up to you. I'm just sharing a piece of my thoughts with you guys. And I believe that minimalism is amazing for our closets and our junk drawers. <laughs> it is awesome to have less stuff, but when it comes to diet, I don't think that it applies. There are a lot of posts out there showing about how we need to be eating more simply, meaning only eating one or two or three things. Now I eat probably 15 to 20 different things in my salads. And like I said, people have been saying, you eat so complex, it's too hard to digest all of that, you can't digest it all. But the thing is, is that we can, if we have a strong microbiome to be able to do so. So when it comes to simplicity, I wanna talk a little bit about that because in my mind, Simplicity doesn't mean limiting. It doesn't mean only two or three things. Simplicity to me means no processing or very little processing, like blending or dehydrating or drying in general. The least amount of processing is where I feel is simplicity, not the amount of different kinds of variety. So there's some people who feel that we should be eating mono meals and that really limits the variety of fiber that we are providing for our gut microbiome. Our gut microbiome is 99.5% of our genetics. We are really only 0.5% human. The rest of our genetics come from our microbiome and they thrive on fiber variety. And as we move through time, we're learning a lot more about the gut microbiome. And this is why I have been eating a lot more complex meals over the last six months to two years. I've slowly started adding more complexity to my salads. You can't start off right off the bat. If you are already eating mono meals, it's going to be hard to move over to more complexity overnight. You have to do it slow. It's a slow, slow process. Even one bite of a food can start to change your microbiome. Scientists can see that, that when people take a bite of something, their microbiome starts to change within a few minutes, but it takes months to years to grow a strong microbiome. You really need to be consistent with it and you need to be increasing variety. Now, this isn't about eating like three cups of broccoli and like five cups of kale and six cups of cabbage and everything at one meal. We can really only fit about 600 to 700 max calories in our stomach of raw plant food because it's so high in fiber and so high in water content. The waterier your food is, like if you have a salad with lots of tomatoes and mangoes and cucumbers, lots of romaine lettuce, you're probably gonna fill up really fast because of the water content. There's so much water that's going into your stomach that you fill up faster. You can really only eat maybe 500 calories of the really watery stuff. The less watery stuff like kale, 
cabbage, that kind of thing. You can eat a little bit more of it because it is a little less water, but it's still high fiber. So really 500 to 700, I would say, is a range of how much we can fit in our stomach at any given time. It's about the variety of what we're eating. So instead of having massive amounts of one or two or three things, Nate and I have been striving to eat smaller amounts of many things. So if we only had like maybe two tablespoons or a quarter cup of broccoli, we're also having like a quarter cup of endive and a quarter cup of radicchio and a quarter cup of dandelion leaves and a quarter cup of bok choy and kale and grated carrots and other things like more yeah we still eat tomatoes and cucumbers and all that but we try to have smaller amounts of more things instead of huge amounts of just a few things and this is simply because we've embraced the new science showing that the more variety that a person eats the stronger their gut microbiome becomes but again it's about going slow a lot of people who eat kale or cabbage or broccoli or what have you and they say well that's damaging to the gut the fibers are rough and it's scratching your walls if they are having issues digesting those foods it's because their gut microbiome isn't ready to yet you can build a gut microbiome to digest those foods if you start to include them in smaller amounts. And we're talking like a tablespoon of chopped broccoli. You don't have to go out there and eat three cups. You start with a tablespoon. Do that every couple days for like two weeks or three weeks and then increase it to two tablespoons for a couple of weeks and then increase it to a quarter cup and then start including other varieties then you're gonna be good with the broccoli. You're doing a quarter cup of broccoli every second day or whatever in your salads. Then you move on to cabbage. Start with a tablespoon of cabbage or even a teaspoon of sauerkraut. Start slowly with these foods. Work with your gut microbiome, not against it. Instead of bombarding them with a cup of sauerkraut or three cups of broccoli, of course that's gonna feel uncomfortable if you're not used to eating those foods. You want to go slow. So that's what I have to say on the diet minimalism and the simplicity. We do eat simple, but in our terms, simple means least amount of processing possible. So we do again have a small amount of processing as in blending or using the dehydrator, but overall we don't eat processed foods and we don't cook our food. So this helps it to be more simple in our world instead of being simple as in eating less variety. So I hope that um, answers the question uh, to whoever has been asking that one and you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will be sharing more recipe videos on here as well. So please stay tuned, subscribe and check out all the goodies I'll be sharing in the coming future. Don't forget to support us. You can also grab any or all of our eBooks. They're 40% off. You can use code rawfood40 to enjoy that discount. There's over 700 raw vegan recipes across all of our eBooks from raw burgers to soups and tacos and there's meal plans and there's holiday menus. There's all kinds of good stuff and more things are being added every year so check out the website and see what's there if anything interests you and again you do not have to be a raw vegan to enjoy raw vegan meals just enjoy adding more to your life i hope you enjoyed this video again i will see you soon and until the next video fruit on